Hi, I'm Dom, a product manager at Google Play. After you've invested a lot of time and effort in building a high quality game, how can you ensure that the experience you've built is what's actually experienced by players? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can protect your game's integrity. When you have a popular game out there, it can attract bad actors. And when they attack your game, it can make the experience worse for all the good players, and it can really damage your business. You might experience people who want to cheat, hack the game, or take advantage of other players. Often attacks come from modded APKs, pirated APKs, emulators, and rooted devices. These aren't always bad by themselves, but they can be used in various bad ways. So you need to think about how you're going to identify these vectors and what you're going to do about them, depending on the type of game you have. For integrity, we have tools to help you answer two important questions. First of all, can you trust your game binary? Did it come from Google Play? And second, can the device itself be trusted? Why both of these questions? Well, if you just listen to the game and it says, hey, I'm great, I'm a legitimate install, but you don't check the device integrity, then the device might be hacked or modified in some way, and it might be trying to fake the answer. So you want to make sure the device is OK as well. So for the first question, can the binary be trusted? There's the Play License Verification Library. And for the second question, can the device be trusted? There's the SafetyNet Device Attestation API. These two APIs work well together to help ensure the integrity of your game. Licensing works like this. You have a game, and you want to find out if the authorized binary was downloaded from Google Play. At Game Startup, your game calls the licensing API. This communicates with Play's license verification server and asks, has the user downloaded the game from the Google Play Store? If they did, then the verification server returns a valid license. This triggers the license callback, and you can then allow the player into the game. Suppose the user doesn't have a license. Maybe they got the game from an unauthorized distributor. Then the server returns no license, and you can choose how to respond, for example, by keeping the player out of the game. That's the license check. The second thing is safety net device attestation. This is a little bit more complicated. You're checking to see if the device itself has been compromised or is untrustworthy. So this has to be initialized by a server. You can't just trust the device's own opinion of itself. SafetyNet works well for intrinsically server-based games, which rely on server calls and server-side logic. In this example, we have Supercell's Brawl Stars. This is very much a server-based game. When something important happens in the game, like the user tries to log in, Supercell starts a SafetyNet check. Supercell's backend server initiates the check by sending a unique nonce to the game. A nonce is a small, unique ID that's associated with the request all the way through this process. This is to protect against something called a replay attack. That's where an attacker just reuses a successful attestation to do something malicious. The game makes an API call to the SafetyNet API with the nonce attached. This is forwarded to the SafetyNet backend. SafetyNet uses a lot of different signals to assess whether the device has been compromised and whether it passes certification tests. It processes these signals and then sends a signal back about whether the device can be trusted. The SafetyNet attestation API forwards the response to the game. The game sends it back to Supercell's backend server. Finally, if the backend receives a valid attestation from SafetyNet and the nonce matches, then it knows it can trust the device. Now, the backend server can tell the game that it can let the player in. If the attestation was invalid, then the server can decide how to act and can tell the game what to do. So this is how SafetyNet attestation works. So how does this all work in real life? Let me show you two examples. The first is Rovio and Angry Birds 2. This is a huge worldwide game. It has a global leaderboard that everyone in the world can see. And as you can imagine, Rovio sees lots of attacks on this leaderboard. A lot of people want to cheat and get their name to the top. There were two main ways of attacking the leaderboard. The first was tampered APKs, which people were sideloading. And the second one was a memory attack on the device. A memory attack is only possible on a rooted device. So this is a really good use case for SafetyNet, which checks to see if the device has been compromised or not. So Rovio implemented SafetyNet attestation, and the results were really good for them. After 30 days, 40% fewer players were on untrustworthy devices, 
These were rooted devices, emulators, spoofing, and so on. This is typically where hacks come from. So that meant fewer hacks that Rovio had to defend against and a fairer environment for all their players. As a result, there were a higher degree of spenders in their top leaderboard. The leaderboard was now actually showing real players, people who are committed and dedicated to the game. It helped the game, it helped their leaderboard, and it helped their community. A second use case I want to walk you through is reducing beta leakage. This happens when a game is soft launching and running a beta in a few countries before they roll it out to more countries. The purpose of a beta like this is to be limited. Your game isn't really ready for the whole world. And soft launching lets you get feedback from players. You can gather useful information, such as determining how many servers you're likely to need when you go to production. Beta leakage is when that doesn't happen. Instead of having a few territories playing the game, now you have people from all over the world playing the game because they've got a hold of a copy. This can be really hard for you as a game developer. You can't accurately project how many servers you're going to need. You can't understand the makeup of your users and their typical behavior. One partner we worked with saw a real issue with this. They saw in a past Android soft launch that 90% of their beta players came from non-beta countries. Android is an open platform, which is one of its great strengths, but it means that sharing APKs is quite straightforward. And so the challenge for you as a game developer is, how do you prevent your soft launch from unintentionally becoming a global launch? This is where Google Play licensing and safety net attestation come in. Licensing lets you know the user is in one of your beta countries and they got the binary from Google Play. And safety net lets you know you can trust the device. Now, what was the result of this? Supercell wanted to control the distribution of their Brawl Stars APK during beta testing. They wanted to ensure that the beta didn't leak beyond a certain set of countries. With a combination of licensing and safety net, they saw a significant reduction in the number of sessions from leaked builds. Compared to a previous beta launch, which had 90% unauthorized beta players, they saw under 50% unauthorized beta players. That's an amazing result. Supercell was really happy about this. These two pieces of technology have a much wider set of applications. So they are also worth exploring for other integrity related challenges. Geo beta locking is a simple use case that many games could benefit from during the soft launch phase. Those APIs can be a decent amount of work to integrate really well into your game. They work best for heavy server integrations where there is content and logic server side so that they can't simply just be ripped out of your game. So what about games which don't have a backend server? Single player games typically work for the offline or maybe you're an indie developer and you don't have your own backend server. Paid games typically work offline too. For these types of games, we're working on automatic integrity protection. This is currently a developer preview. For games opted into protection, Play will automatically add checks to your game. We're looking for close partners to test with, so express your interest in the form at this link, and we'll be in touch if you've got a suitable title. So far, I've talked about protecting your game's integrity. I also want to talk about protecting security. Security attacks come in many different forms, and issues with security can result in really significant damage, such as serious harm to your users and even big fines from regulators. And it can result in negative PR. So it's really important for you to have robust security processes. You want to find and fix bugs before they're exploited. As a game developer though, finding security vulnerabilities is not your normal area of expertise. And that's why we actually recommend outsourcing this to experts. Google Play in collaboration with HackerOne now offers a bug bounty program for you to join. Google will actually pay cash bounties on your behalf to white hat security researchers when they find vulnerabilities and report them responsibly. Lots of developers have joined the program and so far we've paid out more than $250,000. We're inviting game developers to join too. Follow this link to express interest. Let's recap. For server-based protection, Google Play licensing and safety net device attestation help you check that you're communicating with your game binary downloaded from Google Play on a trustworthy device. For client-based protection, we're looking for close partners to join our new Automatic Integrity Protection Developer Preview. Fill out the form to express your interest. And finally, join Google Play's Bug Bounty Program to let researchers find more bugs and vulnerabilities in your game so that you can strengthen your game's security. Thanks very much.